Hi, this is Gary. Welcome to today's video. Well, who can believe it? We're into April. That's a quarter of the year gone. Start of a new month. Well, that means it's time to jump in and update my bullet journal. Now, I do use this every day. And when I started doing it, I did a video and said, you know, I've been looking at doing a monthly update. Unfortunately, because of various circumstances in February, at the end of the month, in time for March, well, I just couldn't do one. So I thought, let's kickstart it again. So here we are, start of April. Let's get on. Let's look at the bullet journal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step through the pages, discuss how I've been getting on with it, and also the changes that I'm going to make. So join me now down on the mat, and we'll start looking through my bullet journal. So here we are down on the mat. Before we jump into the journal, just going to fetch this and introduce this. This is the pen that I'm going to be using today. This is a Pen BBS 456. The colour, well, it's called Cloud. I think it's a lovely colour. It's got a fine nib, so it's quite nice for writing in the bullet journal. The ink in here is by Diamine and it's called Aqua Lagoon. It's a really nice pale blue colour. Really enjoy using this pen and ink combination. So I thought, what better to use to update my journal? Well, let's use this one. Now, as I said in the introduction, it's been a couple of months since I did a video. So what we're going to do today is we're going to walk through most of the pages. I don't know if we'll do that in the following months. Maybe it'll, there'll be shorter videos, but as I say, it's been a couple of months. One of the things I want to point out before we start is I do use a hybrid system. So yes, I heavily use my bullet journal. That's the here with me all day. It goes everywhere that I do but I do use a number of digital services. And as we go through today's video, well, I'm going to give you a screenshot of a couple of them, just so that you can see how I'm actually doing things. So with all that being done, let's jump in and let's start looking through the bullet journal. So I'm going to skip that because you don't want to see my contact details. The first page we're going to look at is the index. So as you can tell, I only updated this yesterday. It's one of the things that we'll talk to when we get to video improvements. And it's one of the things we'll talk to when we get to lessons learned is I'm finding I'm not very good at updating this index. So that's something that I need to get on top of. So I've got some blank pages there. Next one we're going to jump onto is the future log. Now this is empty. As we go through the video, where there's some personal information, you will find that I block it out. This is my live bullet journal. This is what I use day in, day out. So there will be personal stuff as well as stuff that I'm happy to share. So please, if you see blocks of white where I'm blocking it out, understand that's for privacy reasons, because at the end of the day, I don't want to share my entire life with you. As you can tell with the future log, with the exception of Christmas, it's blank. I've not been using it. This is where I've been using my calendar. So I'll pop up that screenshot now of my calendar. I do use my calendar fairly actively and I check it religiously or uh, multiple times a day. What I've been finding is the future log, it's not been serving a purpose for me because it's all on my calendar. And I want to stick with my digital calendar because that's available on my computer, on my tablet and on my phone. So future log, not really being used, as you can tell. So in future, when I go into another journal, I won't even bother with a future log. Next page we're going to look at is my annual themes and goals. As I said at the beginning, this is the year of the phoenix for me. It's the, the year of reinvention, and it's something I'm still focusing on. We're going to take a quick look at my goals. January, we were good. February, well, I managed to get the number of subscribers I wanted, but I struggled with the task management course. How did we do in March? So number of subscribers, wow, that was a big miss. I had aimed to have 550 subscribers for my YouTube channel. At the time of the recording, I've got 477. So that's a massive miss. Now, there's loads of reasons for this, most of them outside of my control because it's all down to the YouTube algorithm. A lot of people, they'll tell you, don't worry about the number of subscribers. And in one respect, I'm not. It's just, it's a metric that I can measure. That's the only reason I'm using it. My focus is on producing two videos a week, one which goes out on a Tuesday, and one which goes out on a Friday. And I've been meeting that. I've been doing that every single week since, I want to say since the start 
start of January. Now, even when I had some issues in the end of February, I still managed to be getting those two videos out each week. So it's not down to the number of videos, or should I say it's not down to the frequency of the videos. So I just need to take a look at what can I do differently? And we'll look at some of that when we get to the lessons learned and the video improvements pages. My task management course, didn't even look at it. I've had a bit of a rough month. I've been really struggling with getting a lot of things done. I wanted to focus on the YouTube channel, which is what I've been doing. So this task management course, well, it fell on the back burner. One of the reasons for this course going back is I released a course two months ago on getting emails under control. And in the two months since I released it, it's not had a single purchase. So part of me is saying is, right, I need to rethink what I'm going to be doing with these videos because obviously there's not the interest there. So so I didn't want to spend a lot of my time and effort working on a course if it's not going to sell. So that's why I've put this one on hold. I had other things to concentrate on this month. And that's fine. That's the whole idea of this. It's just a goal. It's not something that's going to kill me if I don't achieve it. My next goal, well, that was to start walking three days a week. Again, I've missed that. Part of it is because of the issues that have been going on and the amount of work I've been doing around that. But the other reason is it's still so warm on a morning here. I like to do my walking in the morning before it starts to get hot. But by the time I get up, now I get up at seven o'clock in the morning. Most days it's like over 25 degrees already. That's in centigrade. So I'm afraid that's just too hot for me. I'm not going to do a one hour walk in that sort of temperature. You know, that that's just madness. So I had to delay that. For April, well, I've only got two goals for April. The first one is, I'm staying with that. I want my 550 subscribers. On YouTube. You might be able to tell here, I'd made a mistake and I'd put something in here which shouldn't have done. So I used white out on it. To be honest, it doesn't really work very well on this paper. So I need to be more careful going forward. My second goal, I'm going to still go for that walking goal. So I want to start walking three days a week. The temperatures are starting to drop a bit, so I'm hoping give it another week or two and it may be the right temperature for me to get out there again. Now, this here only arrived yesterday. I had been using some kitchen roll as a blotter. Yeah, looks really professional, doesn't it? But I'd ordered these and these eventually arrived yesterday. So this is just blotting paper. You'll see I've got a number in this book. That's just so I can make sure I don't have my ink going all over. All right. Skipping over the page to the master project list. Not a lot to report on this one. So my pen videos, obviously this is one of them. It's ongoing. The email course, that's the one I said it was complete. It just hasn't sold. Task management course, well missed that. Not even going to worry about it. Pen list of 2021 release number one. Yeah, that's done. Shift dashboard 2021.1. That's ongoing. Still hoping to have that out by the end of April. And I've just realized here when I put for my release two, I put the wrong date, didn't I? That should be the end of April. And that's ongoing. So that's looking like it's on track. So with these ones, I've been concentrating on a number of these, mainly these pen list and shift dashboard, which are some iOS apps that I am writing. So they're going to keep going and they're going quite well. I don't have any new projects at the moment for this month. So we'll just leave it as is. Right, this next one, you'll see how much white out it is. Gratitude log. To me, the gratitude log is very personal. You know, everything I put in here, it's more about my, my feelings and a lot of it is to do with my personal life. So at the moment, I don't feel comfortable with sharing it, but I just want to make you aware there is the gratitude log. And what I do is every weekend I sit down and I think, is there something that can go in there? Most weekends there isn't because most weekends there's nothing really happened that would, would really trigger me to write it in my gratitude log. Now, this is something I do need to think about because have I set my bar too high? Should I be writing down here the smaller things which have gone well or which I'm thankful for? I don't know. I'd really be interested in what you think about that. Please drop a comment down below. Should I be doing that more often? Should I be using this gratitude log for the smaller things as well as the big ticket items? I'd love your feedback on that. So we'll move forward on to lessons learned. 
So this one is the one where I've certainly been able to put things. So as I said, I've been doing this for two months and although it doesn't look like there's a lot of lessons learned, there are a number of things which, well, I haven't written down here, but are things that have changed as I've been going along. So the first one, the weekly spread, it's not been referred to. So stop doing it. So what I did fairly early on is I did a weekly spread and it would take me, I want to say half an hour because what I found, I wasn't using it. What's the point in doing something if you're never going to refer to it? There is none. So stopped doing that. And to be honest, it was a weight off my mind. Pens in use. So this are the monthly videos that I do where I show the pens that I'm going to be using for that month. I was just really picking pens at random each month. What I decided to do is I want to give each month a theme. So for the month of March, the theme was they were all Chinese pens. So it allowed me to compare pens from a range of companies in China. For April, it's non-Chinese pens. So I've got some pens from Japan, Italy, the UK, Germany. And again, I can compare them with other similar pens from non-Chinese companies. For the month of May, I've actually already decided what my theme is. My theme for May is going to be the blues. So the idea of that is the pens will be blue and the inks, well, they'll all be different shades of blue. That again lets me compare a number of blue inks. So the idea is, is to have a theme so that I can learn something from each month, which I think is a good thing. Another item I found, well, my YouTube videos. Now, I deliberately film them, edit them and publish them in 4K. That's a deliberate choice. Downside of that, the files are massive. So one of the things I was finding is it takes about four hours for a file to upload. And then I have to do all my other stuff. So I was trying to do that on the day of publishing. It just didn't work. There wasn't enough time to do it properly. So what I've started doing is for the video that goes out on a Tuesday, I upload it on a Sunday morning. For the video going out on a Friday, I upload on a Wednesday morning. So that means I've got a couple of days to upload the video and then to add in all the extra data that's needed. Needed. So I've got a couple of other things to add on to here. The first one, I'm not using the monthly or future log. So as I've already said at the beginning, not been using that future log. I'm just going to jump forward to the monthly. Now there'll be a lot of white on here because you don't care what I did each day. That doesn't really matter, does it? But what I found was I wasn't referring to this at all. I was spending the start of each month writing it all out and then never looking at it. What's the point? The one thing I was using on here is this tracker. So I've got sleep, reading, exercise and alcohol. Haven't done much of any of those this month. I say it's been a bit of a rough month, but I have been tracking my sleep. And this tracker, it's something I want to make sure I'm using every single month. So I love the tracker, don't love this part. So a lesson learned from this, I'm not doing it. Don't waste time creating it if I'm not going to use it, but I will create a separate page for trackers, which we'll see as we go through. The next one, again, I've already mentioned this. I've not been updating the indexes. One of the key things is to have that index up to date. That's how I'm meant to be able to get quick access to anything. So what I've done is a lesson learned. And as I said, um, the idea is on my Sundays when I'm doing my gratitude log, I'll also update the index. The final lesson learned for this month is keep journal on desk. So when I was at home, I would often take the journal and I would leave it in the lounge area, which is where I sit on an evening. And you know, that's where I do update the journal quite often, but it means it was sat there out of the way. And when I was at my desk, which is when I want to be using it, well, it was in the other room, so I wasn't using it. The lesson learned here is to keep the journal on the desk. So now what I've done is I've set aside a dedicated space on my desk where the journal sits so that if I ever want it, it's quick to get to and I always know where it is. So that's the lesson learned from that. Let's move forward again. Brain dump. Well, I've got nothing here. Again, this is a page, to be honest, I don't think I'll ever use. Why I'm saying that is I set it up initially because I was thinking, well, if I'm out and about, I've got somewhere to jot down ideas. But as I said before, I use a hybrid system. So if I get an idea when I'm out and about, I actually just jot it in my Apple Notes app. And then when I get home, that's when I go through it. And it's something I do every day. So it's really means this isn't adding anything to me. So again, it's something 
I'm going to leave it there. I may decide to come back and start using it. But at the moment, I'm happy with the way it's going with the digital part. Video improvements. So this is where I'm putting things that I want to address with the videos that I make. So some of these I've already done, but some of them I'm still working on, you know. Plan with me video series. Well, what are we doing now? I'd like to do a series on what I use my pen and paper for. So obviously I use it for bullet journaling, but I use it for other things as well. And I think that would be quite interesting is to look at what else I use it for because it's all well talking about pens and inks, but they're just tools. What's important is how you use them and what you use them for. So that's something I'm thinking of is how I could actually do that series and how I can make it interesting. So that's, that's a work in progress. I do have a couple of other ones to add on here. So the first one, let's check the focus of the camera. I had a video, I want to say in early March, which it was an unboxing video. So it's one of those videos you can't really reshoot. Virtually all of it was out of focus. It looked, well, to be honest, it looked crap. And I had no option though, because I wanted to put it out. So I had to put it out even though it was out of focus. So this is partly a lesson learned, but because it's to do with the video, that's why I put it in this section. I now have in my checklist of things to do, so I do already have a checklist, is I've added in there to check that the focus is set properly and to be constantly monitoring the focus as I go through the video. Now, how do I monitor that? Well, I had to shoot this video using my iPhone because it's got a really good camera. And what I do is the app I use is called Called Filmic Pro and it's got a partner application called Filmic Remote. So I actually use Filmic Remote and I've got that on a big iPad right in front of me so I can see it all the time. And now I'm constantly checking to make sure that it's in focus. And if it's not, then I can manually adjust the focus in the app. Really, really handy to do. But for me, it's taken a bit of that pain away. I'm now seeing what is meant to be there and I'm making sure it's in focus all the time. And that should then mean I don't have to worry about that really bad video happening again. Some other future ones I want to do. Closed captioning. So this is where you have the subtitles on screen that people can choose whether to see them or not. Haven't been able to do much about this at the moment. I'm looking at ways that I can hopefully automatically get a transcription of my videos because otherwise that's going to be a fair amount of work to do for each video. You know, you may see maybe a 10 to 15 minute video, but to make that video, you'd be surprised, can take me four to five hours. And then if I was having to, to then type out a transcript, that could be another hour on top of that and then put the time codes in. And, you know, I've got to be aware of how much time I have. It's something I'd like to do. And if I can find a way for it to be automatically done, that's something I will do. But at the moment, it's there. I want to track it, but I don't think I'll be doing anything about it. Next item, improved thumbnails. Now I'm an IT guy. I'm not an artist. And yes, I try to make thumbnails, but to me, as I'm getting more into this, they're just, well, they're utilitarian. They're not attractive. So one of the things I'm working on is how I can improve the thumbnails I generate. It's something, it's going to take me a few months because I'm experimenting and you're not really seeing the results of those experiments too often, but occasionally you are. So yeah, improve thumbnails. That's something else I want to work on. Final item for this month is video shake. Again, I've had a couple of videos where my camera was shaking when I was writing. Now, why this was is obviously I'm using an iPhone, so I've got like a boom arm, which was going from my desk up and holding the camera. When it was attached to the desk, every time I was writing, it was making the whole desk shake, which was making the camera shake, which looked really bad. I mean, a couple of the ones I actually ended up throwing them away because they made me feel sick just watching them, the amount that the camera was shaking. So what I've done is really messy. I've got a remote control unit for a camera camera, which is a long flat base. So I've got that attached to a tripod and then I've got the boom arm attached from the remote unit and then up over my desk. So that means that's no longer touching the desk. 
Apart from one time when I made a little bit of a mistake. I set it all up, recorded the video and it was shaking all over again. What I'd done is the boom arm was touching my monitor which was on the desk. And again, as I was writing, was shaking the monitor. The monitor was shaking the boom arm. So as a result of that, I had to move my desk around a bit. So my monitor now is a, a good two to three inches away from that boom arm. And I've not had any problems with video shake since then. So of all these, I've done the photos as a camera and I've done the video shake. So I am working on these. And as I say, each month I'm learning new lessons. And the idea is I'll track it on here. Right, we're going to skip forward a few pages to here. So this is this week. I'm actually recording this on the 31st of March. So as I say, I've not really been using my calendar and anything, but I still want to bullet journal. So this is how I go about with my daily work. As I said earlier, I use a hybrid system. So my appointments and everything, that's on my calendar. My task management is done using an app called OmniFocus, which is really good. You know, it captures tasks really well. And I've got hundreds of tasks in there. My video production, well, I control that using a system called Notion and I have have a database within Notion where I store my details of what I'm going to be doing with the videos, what days they need to be done, all sorts of details. Now, if you're interested in any of these, if you're interested in how I use my calendar or how I use OmniFocus or how I use Notion, please drop a comment below. Let me know because if people are interested, then I'll make videos on them because I think when we look at this plan with me and the use of hybrid systems, I've got to be honest, if, if everybody is really, really honest, we all use a hybrid system. And I get a lot of value looking at other people's systems, how they do it, because that gives me ideas. So if it's something you'd be interested in, I'd love to know. So how do I do it? Well, as you can see, I've got Monday and Tuesday in here. So I'm going to go for Wednesday. So what I do at the start of each day is I go through my calendar. I'm going to put in here an appointment for filming because I do put that into my calendar. I set aside time each week, at usually two days, sometimes more, where I'm going to be doing my filming because that way I can make sure that things are nice and quiet in the house. The wife, well, she goes off and she volunteers at a thrift store locally. So I try to time my recording when she's out because, you know, otherwise she wants to come in and say, do you want a drink? How are you doing? She wants to come in and chit chat. If I'm filming, well, I just don't want those interruptions. So today's my filming day. Check my calendar. I've got nothing else on today but filming. I then go to OmniFocus and what I do is I pick out the top three tasks. So for today, it's record, plan with me. It's edit, plan with me. And it's also upload, pens in use for April. They are the top three tasks that I want to achieve today. They're not by any means all the tasks. And one of the things I'm doing, because I'm using this hybrid system, I'm using a bullet journal to allow me to focus on what is important for that day. Yes, I will do lots of other things. And, you know, record plan with me. It's about 20 tasks in my OmniFocus system. But I only have one entry in here. I don't need the details. This is to make sure that I do those important things every day. If I haven't got anything important to do that day, well, do you know what? I'd leave it blank. I don't usually put anything in at all for a weekend because the weekend is about spending time with family. It's not about doing work. But if there was something important, it would go in here. So I make sure I'm tracking it. I make sure I'm achieving it. So there's my plan for today. My plan for today is my filming. So I have five hours blocked out in my calendar for that. I want to achieve these tasks. I want to record, edit, and I also want to upload Friday's video. I do that first thing in the morning. So that's actually complete. So I can mark that as complete. So I know that what I'm doing. In a few minutes time, I'll be able to mark the record complete. And then hopefully later on this afternoon, I'll be able to mark that edit as complete. The last page we're going to look at today. This is the new page I've added. This is the trackers. This is what I've taken off that monthly log because this is what I'm interested in. So I've set it up for April. I've got the numbers 1 to 31, the days of the week, and then I've got a column for sleep, reading, exercise, and alcohol. So sleep, that's the number of hours that I get. Read, I put an X in there if I've read. Exercise, I'll be putting an X in there if I've done the exercise for the day. 
and A, well, if I have some alcohol that day. Nice, simple tracker. What I'll then do for May, when it comes around, there'll be a new column here for May. These same tracking items, but as time goes on, I may change. I may add things in. That's, a, again, the beauty is I can add things in as I need them. I can also, as we've seen this month, take things out as I need to. So that is my Plan With Me session for April. I hope that you've got something from this. I'd love to get your feedback because, you know, I'm still very new to using a bullet journal. I'm using this hybrid system. I'd love to get feedback from you on how you use it and what I could actually be doing and what additional things I could be adding in, which will enhance my work and my life. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please hit that thumbs up button, give it a like. How are you getting on with your bullet journal journey? Are you using one? Did you start and found it just fizzled out? Drop a comment down below. Let's talk about it. Let's see how everyone's going. Let's talk about any struggles you've been having because, you know, that could inspire some future videos where we can pull our knowledge and come up with some tips that help people when they're starting out or even trying to enhance their use of their bullet journal. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.